Bree from Calathea Candle Company, and in today's video, I'm going to be taking you along with me as I pour some more of my tin candles. And yes, I do make concrete candles, but I also sell six ounce tin candles. So as you can see behind me on the shelf, I'm pretty low in inventory on those. So I figured I would take you guys along with me as I pour some more. And I also just wanted to say a quick thank you for all of your support with my channel. I honestly had no intentions of keeping this up and running after my first video because it was very cringy for me to make, but I'm just so thankful for your guys' support and I'm glad that I can be helpful to you and help you learn different things. Um, so I really appreciate it. And if you enjoy the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And I hope you stick around. Before I jump into today's video, I'm super excited to share with you guys about Inventora. If you haven't heard of Inventora, it's an all-in-one inventory system designed to help you manage your products and the supplies used to create those materials. And it was actually created by a fellow candle maker, Diana, who owns Terra. She, like myself, was having trouble managing her inventory, so she and her partner created Inventora to help fill this void of managing day-to-day -day business operations within the handmade market. And one of my favorite features about it is that you can sync Inventora with your shop on Wix, Shopify, and Etsy. So that's what I've done here. I've synced it with my Shopify, and it automatically pulls up all of my products on my site. And then another feature that they recently added that's really cool is this production feature. And you can add production runs and it sort of makes it like a to-do list of things you need to get done. So I'm going to add that I need to make more of my Ola Vista tin candles. And you just select how many you'd like to make when you'd like them done by. And it just makes your life so much easier just being able to have everything in one place. Your materials, your products, and your to-do list. So I will go ahead and leave their website and Instagram linked below in the description box, and I highly recommend checking them out. All right, I'm waiting for my wax to get hot enough. So while that's heating up, I'm gonna go ahead and clean out my tins and wick them. So I just removed them from the plastic packaging that they come in, and now I'm gonna spray a paper towel with some alcohol and just give them a quick wipe down. And this just makes sure that there's no dust or debris in there, anything that's going to prevent our wick from sticking to the bottom properly. And these tins are from California Candle Supply. And they are the 8-ounce black tins. And this is what the lid looks like that it comes with. And I can usually fit 6 ounces of wax in here. Um, I usually will fill it up to that fill line right here and that will give me six ounces. So even though it's an eight ounce tin and that's what it's sold as, the wax that fits in there is six ounces. So you have to make sure that you're listing it as a six ounce candle. To wick these, I typically use the LX16 or 18, depending on the fragrance. Um, I'm gonna be using Mango Coconut Milk by Candle Science today. So I'm gonna go with the LX18. And as always, I urge you to do your own testing to see which wick works best for you. I'm gonna go ahead and get some more alcohol and a paper towel and just wipe down the bottom of these. Wicking a tin is a little bit difficult because it's such a shallow vessel that you have to find something that's not gonna completely tunnel all the way down. And so my wicks that I use for my concrete vessels, the CDNs were not working for me with the tins, but after months and months and months of testing, I found that the LX16 and 18 worked the best for me. And then go ahead and put the wick sticker on these, and then I'm just gonna pop them in there right now and then we'll grab our centering tool and stick them on. For centering these, I just use the same thing that I use for my concrete candles. It's not perfect, but it's good enough for me to get as close to the center as I can. So this is just the centering device from Design House. So I'll just whoop, pop that in the middle 
and then peel off my sticker and just pop it right in. And then make sure you press down so it's on there pretty good. And there we go. All right, so all my wicks are attached. I'm gonna go ahead and go in with the stabilizer. Again, it's not a perfect fit. If you have your own method of doing this, definitely don't need to follow mine because it's definitely not perfect at all, but it works for me, so I stick to it. Here's my calculation for determining how much wax and fragrance oil we're gonna be using. So I just took the total fill amount of the candle, which is 170 grams, and I divided that by 100 plus whatever fragrance load percentage we're using. So we're using 9% fragrance load today. So 100 plus nine is 109. So 170 divided by 109%, and we get 156 grams of wax. And then to find the fragrance oil, you just deduct the 156 from the original amount of 170, and we're left with 14 grams of fragrance oil. So that would be what we would use for just one candle, but because I was making more than one today, I just multiplied everything by five and went off of these numbers right here. All right, I'm gonna get my fragrance oil measured out. So I'm just gonna turn on my little scale. And I am pouring five tins at once, so I'm gonna be needing 70 grams of fragrance oil. And this is the mango coconut milk from Candle Science. I wish Midwest Fragrance Company would come out with something similar to this because this is one of the only fragrances that I buy from a different supplier, but it's just too good. That's a little bit over, but that's okay. I feel like some of it gets left behind as you pour anyway. I'm gonna make sure that my scale is on grams, and it is. And we're gonna need 780 grams to fill five tins. Okay, and then grab my spatula. I'm going to immediately add my fragrance oil. And give it a stir. For coconut wax, since you heat it up so hot anyway, you don't need to stir for two minutes. So I usually do like 15 to 30 seconds. Okay, my dog is squeaking her toys, so sorry <laughs> if that's annoying. But I'm gonna go ahead and start filling these up until that fill line. And with my concrete jars, I do wait until this cools down to a certain temperature until I pour. Just because the concrete is so cold, um, but for the tins, it doesn't really matter. So I just pour as soon as I'm done mixing the fragrance. It smells so good. So it is actually the next morning. I just finished removing the wick stabilizers and trimming the wicks, and now I'm gonna go ahead and label them. So for my tins, I actually use three labels. I do put one on the lid, and this is the two and a half inch circle on the brown craft paper from Online Labels. And I just put my logo in the, it is a, coconut wax blend candle, and then the net weight. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop that on the lid. Perfect. And then for the other label on the actual jar, these are the 3.75 by 1.25 inch labels on the brown craft paper. And just stick this guy in the middle. Whoops. Okay. 
can make this even. There we go. And then just smooth it out, make sure there's no bubbles. And then last but not least, the warning label. And these are just the two inch round white mat labels. There we go. And that is what the end result looks like. And if only you guys could smell this through the screen, it smells so good. All right, we are all done. Here's what they look like. So I'm gonna go ahead and add these to inventory and put them on the shelves and they'll be ready to go. And that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.